Who is Peter Zatko and what has he claimed? Yeah, this is someone who's incredibly well respected in the security industry. He came to Twitter in late 2020. You may remember, Emily, that in the summer of that year, there was a big breach at the company. A bunch of very high profile accounts were hacked by a teenager. And Jack Dorsey, then the CEO, you know, made a big uh, uh, plan to bring someone in with some real kind of reputation and, and stock in the industry. And so his, you know, goes by Mudge is his nickname. And he was there until early this year, 2022, when he was actually fired or dismissed by CEO Prague Agarwal. So very recently in the building at Twitter. So he was there very recently, uh, Twitter responding to his claim saying, um, this is from the, the CEO Prague Agarwal, I believe you obtained this memo. They're reviewing the claims, but what they've seen so far is a false narrative right. riddled with inconsistencies and inaccuracies, inaccuracies and presented without important context. Give us more details on what he is claiming. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's essentially saying that the company has not taken the appropriate steps to protect user data. He's saying that they haven't taken appropriate steps to update you know, basic software on their data servers, right? Uh, and the big thing, and this is the thing that you know, Elon Musk is, is jumping on, is that he says, well, the company doesn't actually know how many bots uh, it has on the platform, right? It's a little bit more nuanced than that. We can get into that. But generally, you know, when you hear that in your Elon Musk, your ears perk up because this is what you have been arguing all along is that the company doesn't actually know how many bots it has. And here is a top senior executive who reported to the CEO essentially reaffirming what Elon's been saying. So, Jeff, Musk's lawyers have already said, we want to talk to this guy. How could this potentially change the case? What's going to happen in this hearing? Well, first and foremost, let's let's stop for a second and say that it's way too early to know whether this guy's got the goods or not. Uh, you know, people are going to have to dig in and see, you know, whether there's meat on the bone for these allegations. Now, tomorrow is not about uh, the, the this guy. It's about allegations that the Musk people have made that the Twitter folks are hiding uh, witnesses with specific knowledge of the spam and the bot accounts, and they're offering up, you know, executives and directors who don't have specific knowledge. Judge is going to decide whether or not Twitter has to make, you know, the people with the, the goods available. So, Kurt, I know you've been talking to a lot of sources. There's been some reaction from within the company. Yeah. What are people saying? Yeah, I mean, there's a number of current employees who you can imagine aren't very thrilled, right, to see someone who was so recently on the staff level at the company now coming forward and making these accusations. There's been a lot of speculation as to the timing, right? I mean, we are right in the middle of this very contentious deal, and suddenly this feels like a huge uh, wrapped gift for Elon Musk. So there has been speculation there as well. but. You know, ultimately, this just adds even more kind of chaos and confusion to what's already been a very uncertain time at a company like this. Jeff, how often does it happen that, you know, someone comes forward claiming to have, you know, the smoking gun, you know, at the perfect time in a high profile business case like this? It has happened before in a case called Acorn Fresenius. Um, so it's not unusual to have whistleblowers emerge when there's publicity about these big M&A fights. And it's just, you know, everything has been, you know, drama central in this case. So it's not a bit surprising that we've had so, this development. So what are we, what are you watching for? What happens next? Well, again, we have this hearing tomorrow, uh, which will decide whether or not he gets more access to the bot stuff. Uh, going forward, uh, we're basically keeping an eye on the process of gathering ammunition. Both sides are gathering ammunition to make their case. And we're hurtling toward October 17th, the huge, you know, trial of the century in Wilmington, Delaware.